I'm Greta. I'm the module convener for poverty reduction. I'm one of the newest staff members of CIDEP. So I thought I'd use this opportunity to talk about what we can learn from business history research, given that this was the topic of my PhD, which I recently finished. So my PhD was on um, Indonesian small and medium enterprise development since roughly the late 1960s. And I started this topic because I was initially interested in industrial policy, the Asian miracle, tiger economies, um, but then I started discovering questions like how does this affect the economy at large, um, how does the average person participate in this process, do they participate in it at all, given that we know a lot about large enterprises and conglomerates, but what we generally don't, don't really talk about the average firm, small and medium enterprises, and do they change? Are they part of this industrial transformation and um, on, on this path towards economic development? So in my first paper, which is now a couple of weeks away from journal submission, which is very exciting, uh, in the life of a young academic, I look at the fact that one of the features of the East Asian model is the principle of shared growth, which included various reforms, including small and medium enterprise targeted support policies. And in the case of Indonesia, Suharto's new order government, which um, was in place between 1966 and when it was toppled and Suharto finally stepped down in 1998, uh, which restructured the economy along similar lines, which included strengthening small um, business to promote income equality, and yet, despite all these government ambitions, it's commonly argued that Indonesia suffered from a supposed missing middle. So Indonesia's missing middle and this perceived inability of indigenous firms to grow, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis Sino, Sino Indonesian businesses, has been highly politicized and subject to a recurring heated public discourse. So I thought this would be worth to look at in itself to establish, is this true in the first place? Do we see this missing middle? Um, so I analyzed the emergence of a missing middle and I discovered that this um, develops as, as the Indonesian economy grew. Um, I kind of pinpoint when, I ask why this happened and att attempt to identify the main barriers. So in the case of Indonesia, what this business history research revealed is that there was a shift in firm size distribution, as I would have expected. You would expect firms to um, grow larger as an economy develops, but that this shift was mainly from micro enterprises, so very tiny firms, uh, towards small enterprises, while there has been this persistent gap in the medium sized firm sector. Um, and in this first paper, I build a comparison to South Korea and Taiwan. Um, both also with tiger economies, but also to have a reference point. What, what does this all mean? And you will find this in your research as well, that there's an advantage to taking a comparative approach, um, given that it immediately allows your reader to kind of situate where your, what your findings actually mean, where the implications is. In my case, working on firm size distribution, is this a lot? Is this normal? Um, is this path of, is this a part of the regular development trajectory? And in my case, this comparison shows that this missing middle that I find in Indonesia cannot be explained by Indonesia's stage of economic development. And rather, what I find is part of my analysis, where I look at the low value, the value added per worker, I find extremely low value added per worker and micro enterprises and small firms which I say is indicative of a dual economy model. Dual economy model is something you'll learn if you choose to do your master's with us at CIDEP. Um, so this is kind of a bit of an insight of what I'm currently doing. This is my main project. My next project looks at um, the issue of development of access to small, small scale business cre uh, credit in Indonesia, which is often identified as one of the main constraints for small and medium enterprise development everywhere. Um, so I look at this in the case of Indonesia, but has important implications at, um, for 
for governments all around the world and how do you choose to support the sector, what works, what doesn't. In Indonesia, for example, you see quite a lot of investment into um, to subsidize SME credit schemes, which I find don't, don't work very well, if at all, given that they tend to lack the incentive structure for customers to repay and for banks to, to collect on that debt. Um, so you can see that you can learn quite a lot from business history research um, about what, well, my, my personal angle is government policy, but how do, do they work? Is it worth investing? Um, often there's a huge discrepancy between the ambitious goals and what you then actually see implemented in the field. And that is an observation you'll probably make in very many areas and fields uh, far away from business history research, if that is not your thing. So I hope that gave you a little bit of an insight. It was nice to meet you and looking forward to chatting to you soon. Bye.